In this video, we are going to show you 10 reasons why telescopic button is the best self-defense weapon for many people, maybe including you. In this video, we are not going to draw circles, we are going to go argument by argument, reason by reason, why we believe this is the weapon you should carry for your self-defense. Stick to the end of the video to find out all the reasons. Reason number one, it's a weapon. I know how obvious it sounds, but what we do in Sorudo is thousands upon thousands of scenarios where someone is attacked by a knife. And when we do it, one out of 10 people at best survive the attack using their bare hands. Then what we try to do is give them a little of training and telescopic button to see how would they survive. After that, probably seven out of 10 people can survive the attack. So the survivability just by adding a weapon and a little bit of training went from one out of 10 to seven out of 10 by just carrying a weapon with them. It will always be better to have a weapon with you. It's not mixed martial arts fight. The guy who's going to be attacking you is probably going to be much bigger, stronger, and you'll have the advantage of surprise. So that's why you should carry the weapons to equal out the strengths. Second reason is the reach. I think every single mixed martial artist will agree with me that having a reach advantage is one of the biggest advantages you can have. In this case, it's exactly the same. If, for example, in this case, Peter would not have his weapon and he would be only using his hands, he needs to hit me to the head. If we would trade the shot, he's as far from me as I can hit him. Of course, he can strike me, but I can stab him. Let's add the baton to this situation and let's see how the distance changes right now. So he hits me to the head and I'm not even close to stabbing him. Even better, because with baton you don't have to attack the head always, you can choose to go for hands. And the distance is now even bigger. Look how the distance changed. And that's what the telescopic button gives you. It gives you the reach advantage so you don't have to be so close to a guy having a knife or just bare hands. It doesn't matter, but he'll always be the one who will hit me first from further distance. So another one people like to throw out is that it doesn't have the impact power. Mostly because they see videos on YouTube where the policemen are beating someone on the ground and he still continues to fight. Okay, now imagine the same scenario, but the policemen wouldn't have a baton, but they would be slapping him with a hand or punching him to the leg. Do you think it would actually do something? Would it make the situation better? Because I don't believe so. So this is the first key point. The baton will always have more impact than bare hands. Uh, another great example would be something like, let's say you would go to your wife or your daughter and you would say, okay, hit me uh, with your hand as hard as you can. <coughs> it would probably be hurt, right? Yeah, of course, a little bit, but would it stop the attack on the street? I don't believe so. All right, you're saying the impact of the bare hands is the same as a baton? Okay, give them like something like a hammer or a wrench and I'll take the hit to the face. You think it's going to be the same? If you think so, go ahead and no, probably don't try it, okay? <laughs> okay, so I think now it's clear that the impact power of baton versus bare hands, the baton takes it all the way. But maybe some of you guys are thinking, well, I do carry a knife with me at all times, so why would I carry a baton? Well, I think I can show you definitely why. Let's say, both of us have the knife in this scenario. What do you think is going to happen? Is it like in movies where I'm just going to one quick stab and he's going to die? Do you think that's what's going to happen? Because probably not. The reality of the attack is probably going to be that I need to stab him like 20 times or maybe 15 until he falls. Do you know what's going to happen while I'm stabbing him? He's probably going to stab me as well, right? And now it's just a bloodbath. We both probably are going to bleed out and die. Do you want the impact power to be immediate or after? 20 seconds. Okay, so another very popular weapon uh, or self-defense tool is something like a pepper spray. We see it in movies, many women carry it. It's a very common weapon that people use. But now, again, just like with the knife, do you think it's going to look exactly like in the movies where the guy is attacking me and I spray him and he can't even continue fighting because his eyes are hurting? I wouldn't say so. Why? Again, we have tested it multiple, multiple times in uh, many situations with a real pepper spray. It takes about 20 to 30 seconds till the pepper spray sets in and the fighter really can't continue. But this is not acid, this is just a pepper spray. Well, how is it probably going to look like even if I hit the ice correctly, again, without no training? I don't believe so. But if I, for example, hit him right to the ice, what is stopping him from actually continuing the fight? He doesn't have to see me to stab me if he's already near me, right? So that's why the pepper spray again loses the battle with the baton. And probably I would say the best option out of these, but still with many flaws, 
is the firearm, for example, pistols. This was mostly used by other people, not like big rifles or anything like that, but mostly like small guns because it's easy to carry, you can hide it. But, guys, again, just like with the last points, it's not a movie, it's a real life. I'm not saying that if you, uh, in a self-defense situation, hit me straight to the head with a bullet, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna continue. Of course not. But, do you want to shoot uh, someone in the head every single time? It's up to you. But, if he doesn't shoot me to the head and he decides to hit me to the stomach, it's not going to be like in movies when I go flying five meters and I'm not gonna attack him. What it's probably going to look like is when I'm attacking and I do take the first hit, it's gonna suck, but I can still fall and continue. Of course, now I'm gonna collapse and probably die, but what I did, I hit him about six times again. He's probably going to bleed to death again. So, like I said, even the pistol doesn't have the immediate, immediate damage or impact power like the baton. So again, I think gun versus baton, baton again takes this one. Uh, guys, another big reason why telescopic button is the best self-defense uh, tool or weapon is definitely its legality. In most of the countries, you can have telescopic button even visible and carry it. For example, here in Czech Republic, if I'm not wrong, you can correct me, you can even have it completely open and walk the streets and nothing is gonna happen, no one is gonna tell you anything. It's completely legal in most of the countries to have it. Visible or not visible, you have to check uh, how it is in your current country, but there's not many countries that really can't, you can't have the telescopic button with you and have legal issues with it. For example, let's compare it with a gun. You need a gun license. Uh, <laughs> You definitely need more training, but that's, again, for another video. It's a lot harder to carry a gun with you on the streets than the baton, from legal reasons. Then again, let's look at another point. How many times would you rather leave the gun at home because you were going to the gym and you wouldn't want to leave it in the locker room or in the car? With baton, it's fine, even if you lose it. Okay, it's a baton, I'll buy another one. With gun, again, a much bigger problems. So that's another reason why we think telescopic button will be the best soul defense weapon. Another reason, what we should definitely take into consideration, is the baton never runs out of ammo. Oh, you sort of guys, you are so smart. No, guys, let's take a deeper dive into this, okay? I know it seems obvious, just like with the first point, it's a weapon, but again, let's take a deeper dive into the subject. If baton cannot run out of ammo, that means we can use it every single day, whole day, and nothing's gonna happen to it. But the same cannot be said about the pistols. Mostly, the small self-defense uh, pistols don't carry much rounds in them. For example, you need to fight multiple attackers. Maybe in the whole stress of the situation, you missed a couple of times. Oh, and now you have an empty gun. That's the big problem with it. With the stress, the technique goes out of the window, and it's very hard to use the things you are used to. So maybe in the stress situation, the people who have a gun start shoots everywhere, and then he has no ammunition. He's left with a very, I wouldn't say not usable gun, but definitely a gun that has no ammunition and we have to fight only with it. Again, a lot harder than with many bullets, right? The second one would be, for example, a pepper spray. Uh, again, very common weapon that people like to use. A thing here is that you can use it for like three to nine seconds, depending on how big it is, but mostly it's from three to nine seconds. Again, add the stress to the situation, add that he hasn't had much training with the pepper spray. He is gonna miss a couple of times, maybe I blocked some. He's gonna be left with a empty pepper spray. That's another big problem. The third one would be taser. There's many problems, but again, again, it's for another video. The one that I have on my mind right now, that uh, in cold, when it's freezing outside, the battery goes down even without using it very quickly. So you may be surprised when someone attacks you and you want to use your stun gun and it won't turn on. That's a big problem. Not even saying that when, even when it's fully charged is a very bad self-defense weapon, but that's another video. Another point, the baton, you can use it every day, all day, without no problems. So another reason is that the toss pick button is very easy to hide. There are a number of reasons why your self-defense weapon should be very easy to hide. Uh, let's go over the first one. Many people are like, maybe thinking, oh, I don't want to carry a baton with me because everyone's gonna see it and they're gonna feel a thing that I'm paranoid. Baton is very easy to hide. You can carry it to work, everywhere, without anyone noticing it. So that's the very big first part. The second one comes in the self-defense situation. If, for example, Peter would be carrying a gun and it would be pretty visible, me as an attacker would know that he has a gun. If I don't have any weapon, I'll go like, okay, I'm not gonna attack him. But if I do decide to attack him, he doesn't know what weapon I have, but I know definitely that he has a gun. So I'm gonna prepare for it and I'm gonna attack him accordingly to his weapon. 
Then again, let's compare it with baton, how very easy it is to uh, hide. See, ordinary clothes and the baton is not even visible. That's from the front. He can put it to the sides or maybe even to the back. Now here's a very good comparison. He can basically carry it any, uh, anywhere on his ordinary clothes and it won't be visible. Then again, let's take another scenario. You just want to go on a walk on the beach and you only have your shorts or a swimming suit or a swimming shorts. Imagine trying to hide a gun there. I think this is going to be pretty, pretty hard. If you do carry your gun uh, in your swimming suit, please let us know in the comments. We'll definitely look into it. But uh, yeah, the telescopic button, again, would be very easy to hide even in shorts or swimming suits. So uh, another big reason for us is the improvisation. For example, the telescopic button doesn't have to be used only for self-defense situations. It can also be used in first aid. How could you use a telescopic button in first aid? What do you think? If your answer was something like, maybe I can break a window in a car accident, you're right, definitely. You can also make with the telescopic button an improvised tourniquet. You can stop the bleeding with it. How? Maybe for another video? Definitely write us in the comments if you want to see that one. But yeah, it can stop the bleeding, it can break car windows in car accidents. Uh, the number of uses are, there's a lot of them. So when it comes to self-defense situation, uh, what does the baton look like? It's just basically just a long metal stick. So let's say you don't have a baton with you and you have to improvise, maybe at home or outside. What can be used as a baton, but it will not be a baton, if you get what I'm saying. For example, a stick. Maybe you can find a good stick when you need to defend yourself. The use of the stick is exactly the same as with the baton. So even if I try to catch anything, the movements are the same. The same can be said for the shoot maker. Of course, it verifies a little bit. I'm not saying it's exactly the same thing, but the use, again, the same movement. And you may be thinking, okay, what about older people? They have sticks, right? Uh, the walking holes. They can use that as a telescopic button. Hey man, what? And bam! See? And for the last one, maybe a tennis racket? That's a good improvisation weapon as well. So anywhere, any place, anytime, if you find something that resembles the baton at least a little bit, it can be used as a weapon. No problem at all. Imagine you have a baton for self-defense. You can also stop the bleeding with it. Help, uh, it will help you with first aid. If you don't have a baton and you find anything even closely resembling it, you can do a lot of damage with it. So another reason, it's a very big reason, I believe, is a collateral damage. With a telescopic button, it's very hard to hurt someone that you didn't want to hurt. Let's again compare it with a pistol. With pistol, I think it's pretty easy. So let's say in a self-defense situation, we got into a position where we are maybe fighting for a gun and now there's so many people walking around and he just starts shooting, I'm wrestling and we shoot like five people. We are fighting two of us and we shoot five people or even one, it's enough. Let's put into the same scenario, I hold a baton and we're here. How is he going to hurt someone that he doesn't want to? I will either hurt him or he will hurt me. But not as with pistol, where even a random lady crossing the road can get shot. Again, maybe like more easy example. If you would leave a baton on the table at home and you would have like little kid running. I'm not saying that with baton he can't hurt himself, but the chances of him hurting himself with baton and for example leaving a gun on the table at home, compare the risks. Or the same with knife. Why you tell your kids never to run with scissors? Well, because they're gonna stab them themselves. If they will run with baton, uh, maybe they can hit themselves a little bit. But again, see? So baton really is used just to hurt the other. It's very, very hard to hurt someone that you didn't intend to. And the second point in the self-defense situation is, like I said before, the stress of the situation. If Peter is in a lot of stress and he's swinging with a baton, yeah, he'll be swinging all over the place. Maybe he'll hit me somewhere that he didn't intend to. Yeah, maybe he'll hit the person. Give him, with a lot of stress, a gun. <laughs> now the, the trouble is probably twice as big. He'll be shooting all over the place. He'll shoot me once, twice, but he'll shoot like four more people. Compare the risks with baton and with a pistol. Probably most of the guys who will be carrying self-defense weapon won't have five years of training with it, right? So the stress will definitely be there. So keep that in mind when you will be choosing the weapon of your choice. Another big reason would be that you can actually, with the telescopic button, choose if you want to kill the other person or you just want to hurt them. Let's compare. If Peter, in a self-defense situation, would have a knife, how can he choose if he wants to kill me or not? It's not going to be like in moves when he just do, does one cut and now, ah, okay. No. After the cut on the hand, maybe, I'll just go forward. How is he going to choose if he wants to kill me or not? I don't think that's how it really works. The same can be said about the weapon. I'm just gonna shoot the legs. Uh, okay, then I'm gonna probably still attack. And even if I don't, I'll probably bleed out to death. I'm running, he shoots his legs, oh fuck, and I'm here. And he'll probably shoot again, right? 
Again, how is he going to choose if he wants to kill me or not? He's probably not going to strike me with a gun if he has bullets in there, right? Let's again compare with the telescopic button. Let's say it's our lives are at stake. I'm not just maybe random junkie who wants money and is troubling him and is very aggressive. I'm a person that really wants to hurt him. He doesn't have to go for hands or head or uh, legs. He can go to the head straight away. Boom. Boom. Okay, he chose to really hurt me, maybe even kill me. If he wants to only hurt me and not kill me, he can have a variety of places that he can hit. It can be, for example, the hand, it can be the leg, or both. He can choose whatever he wants if he doesn't want to hurt me. Many people are very hesitant to use their weapon because they know once they use it, they're gonna kill the other person. So they'll wait till the very last moment if they want to use the gun or a knife, and it probably can be too late. With baton, you can pick and choose. Again, with a little bit of training, it's always better. You'll have much easier options than if you just grab it and try, uh, start hitting. But the choice will be in your hands, not in, on the weapon. So the last reason is that it's very fun to train with and very easy to train with as well. For example, if we would want to maybe practice together shooting on a person, it's a bit harder to train, right? You would have to have like an airsoft gun, paintball gun. It would be very painful for both of us to like enjoy one hour of training, most likely, yeah? So it's very hard to train with. The same goes with knife. Uh, okay, you can maybe grab a rubber one and practice with that. But with telescopic button, you have so many choices and the training will be very close to reality. For example, what we recommend, probably one of the most, is the blue button. It's exactly the size of baton that we recommend. It's uh, all rubber and it's very easy to train. For example, if you want to train together, I can just put on a boxing glove and Peter can practice his aiming for my hand. The same can be maybe on a bob or on a heavy bag. Okay, I, uh, I don't have blue button, okay. Figure out something, maybe this plaster one. Again, the same thing, we want to practice hitting the hand or the head, of course with helmets. It's very easy to use it. And you'll have it for a long time, you don't have to buy new bullets again and again. So the number 10 reason, probably even one of the most important ones, is you can actually very easy train with it, because if you train with it, you'll be much better at using it. So, okay guys, so after this video, I do believe that you agree with us that the telescopic button is the best self-defense tool for most of the people, but we are on the internet, so we are more than welcome to disagree with us. You have a comment section down below, so just comment what you think about this video, what you agree with, what you maybe don't disagree with. But if you do agree with us, definitely like the video, subscribe to the channel, and definitely share the video with others. Help us save lives. This is why we are here, to save other lives. So if you know someone who is working as a bodyguard, maybe he's a policeman, or maybe just a regular civilian, send him the video so he can choose the right weapon for him. So next time, if he's gonna need it, he will have the correct one. So thanks guys for watching. We'll see you next time.